Marcelo says, hey, guys, how apart should the LNR Atmos speakers to get the best phantom image for hide effects? Uh, does it uh, in line with LCR an ideal solution? Uh, this is all this is all the stuff that we've been talking about recently is uh, what is the best place? Right? What's the best placement? Oh, man. How do I summarize this? <laughs> we've been talking about this for, uh, I guess, weeks now. But I guess the best way to, to say is if you think that most of the content that you're going to be consuming is going to be in native Atmos format. And if you believe that all of the mixes came from a studio that had it based on the specific specification from Dolby, then I think it is safe to try to set it up as similar to their mix studio spec. That's assuming all of those things. It's assuming that all of their mixes were based on exactly, you know, where their speakers were and they're, they're checking everything there. You're going to get the best possible phantom image by replicating their system. But that's also assuming that's also assuming that, um, yeah, it's, it's making a lot of assumptions basically. Right. Um, so that's the best for that. And then on ceiling, in a non-standard configuration, not based on their spec, I've found to be better for me just because I prefer to use Oro 3D to upmix stuff that doesn't have good Atmos. Um, I find that even if I upmix a 5.1 track, 7.1, it does give me a perception of height, and it does a good job of, of making it sound like whatever's happening in the height is coherent with the ear level speaker because the speaker is really just above it, right? And so it just sounds like, imagine if there's a circle that's your 5.1 or 7.1 bed layer, right? All it does is it takes that and then it moves it up, right? So now instead of a circle, you're in some kind of a uh, cylinder. I guess that's the best way to describe that. Um, whereas Dolby Spec makes it sound more like you're in a dome shape, you know, a hemisphere when it's set up correctly. So what's the best place? Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. I think the best thing is to try it out and see for yourself what you like. Um, I found that there are certain cases where, you know, one is better than the other. You know what I mean? Because I've found that sometimes using their spec, yeah, it's, it, it's easier to detect when something's overhead, right? Because it's closer to you, right? When the speaker's closer to you, the sound's closer to you, it's louder, depending on whether you have it level match. But let's just say it's closer to you and you can tell it's closer to you, right? So that can be a good and bad thing, right? It's a good thing if you want to precisely, semi-precisely, uh, be able to figure out where something is. Not so good if you don't want that thing to bring attention to itself, right? Because that's what I did find also, is it can bring attention to itself as opposed to kind of, uh, you know, just kind of blending in with everything. So... I would say try it for yourself. I'm sorry. I know you want a specific answer, but there it is. That's the best I got. Um, what else? Um, what is, let's see what you guys are saying too. Reverend Slim says best phantom image is determined by the spacing between any two speakers beyond about 50 degrees. Phantom image starts to degrade placement outside of that is where is. Yeah. And so he's saying that basically the overhead speakers in the Oro 3D layout that that I use, uh, there's a lot of spacing between the front height and the rear height speaker. There's a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get precise imaging. And uh, for on-ceiling or in-ceiling speakers, they're much closer together, right? So theoretically, that should pan better. And I think it, it, it kind of does, but my argument would be our spatial resolution above our head is poor. And I don't think that it works exactly the same as, oh, there's a phantom image up here, right? It's, to me, it's just more like there's something happening up here and I sense some sort of movement, right? Um, yeah, I, I think it just works a little bit differently. If you're interested in joining us in the after show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash daily hi-fi. We'd love to hang out with you and get to know you better. We're going to have a lot of fun.